What's up, Taiwan? I'm Yvonne Yang with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. A gunman has gone on a shooting spree in Taipei, injuring four people, including a policeman, before turning the gun on himself. The attacker has been identified as a gang member who shot and injured three other gang members in the Wanhua district on Wednesday night. He also shot a police officer who tried to help one of the injured victims. The gunman then hit in a nearby restaurant and took four people hostage. A standoff with police lasted an hour before the attacker released the hostages and took his own life. The victims are being treated in hospital. Taiwan's government has tapped TSMC founder Maurice Zhang to be its representative at this year's APEC summit once again. It will be the sixth time that Zhang will serve as the country's envoy to the regional trade organization's leadership meeting. The two-day summit will be held in Thailand in mid-November. The meeting is being held per in person for the first time since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Taiwan's largest green energy trade show, Energy Taiwan, kicked off in Taipei on Wednesday. With the world looking to eliminate carbon emissions, registered booths are up 29% from last year. Beijing Huang has more. Solar panels are everywhere at Taiwan's biggest green energy exhibition, Energy Taiwan. Solar power has been a dominant force in clean energy for years, but as countries around the world seek to move away from fossil fuels, a variety of new energy sources are being explored, and Taiwan wants to be at the forefront. That means there's a greater emphasis this year on emerging energy, such as hydrogen, and working closely with other countries that have experience with these new technologies. In hydrogen, we are aiming, we have really high ambitions in the UK, and we're aiming to get to 10 gigawatts by 2030 of hydrogen, which is a really high ambition. So uh, we're really excited also to support Taiwan's ambitions and hope that we'll see a really strong partnership between the UK and Taiwan. But the energy transition is not just changing where people get electricity. It's also about how people live their daily lives. Several countries across the world aim to stop selling gas-powered cars completely by 2030. Taiwan is also trying to catch up to that trend, aiming for electric cars to dominate the market by 2040, which means that cars like this one behind me will be more common outside the exhibition center and on the road. Transitioning away from fossil fuels is a huge challenge facing countries worldwide. But this exhibition shows that it's also an opportunity, one in which governments and enterprises can work together to forge a new world. James Renner, Irene Wu, and Eugene Huang for Taiwan Plus. South Korea is reinstating visa-free entry for travelers with a Taiwanese passport. The program starts in November, but visitors will need to apply online for travel authorization three days before their trip. They will also have to fill out a health questionnaire upon arrival. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, Korea was Taiwan's third most popular tourist destination, with 500 flights every week between the two countries. 
A British lawmaker says Chinese diplomats should be expelled if they are found to have taken part in the assault of the Hong Kong pro-democracy protester at the Chinese consulate in Manchester. This is an abomination here in the United Kingdom, believer in human rights, the rule of law, democracy. All of these things are what we stand for. We cannot tolerate this. So I want the Foreign Office not just to say they will take whatever is the necessary action. I wanted them to call the ambassador in and say to the ambassador, and this is exactly what's going to happen. When we identify who carried out this assault, we will send them home. As diplomats, they will no longer be welcome. They will be persona non grata. Whoever they are, and as high as they go, they will be on their way back to Beijing. No question, and we don't care what the Chinese government does in retaliation. We will not stand for this. Video from Sunday shows several men wearing protective gear and masks emerging from the consulate to confront protesters. They then haul one man into the consular grounds. British police are investigating the incident. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs says a protester illegally entered the consulate. Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbing says China has complained to the UK over the harassment of its representative. Bombs and gunfire at Myanmar's largest prison have left at least eight people dead. Two partial bombs exploded on Wednesday morning at visitors' entrance of the prison, prompting soldiers to open fire. The confrontation killed three prison officers and five visitors. Eighteen were in wounded. Yansan prison in the country's largest city, Yangon, houses at least 10,000 people. Many of them are political prisoners detained for opposing the military junta, which seized power in February 2021. An anti-junta group claimed responsibility for Wednesday's bombing in social media. New technology is bringing a classic Taiwan painting to a whole new audience. Eric Gao takes a look. A new way to enjoy classic art. A project by Taiwan's public television service uses the latest technology to bring the classic painting Lotus Pond into cyberspace with an interactive virtual reality experience. Artist Ling Yu San made the painting in 1930. He stayed by the pond he was painting the entire night, waiting for the perfect moment when the lotus blossomed. Now, viewers don't have to go through all that. They can put on this headset to experience all the details of the painting. They can even see things from the perspective of a dragonfly buzzing over the pond, a frog jumping on the lotus leaves, or a fish swimming in the water. The VR project is part of government efforts to bring Taiwan's art and culture to a wider audience. The Lotus Pond VR exhibit will be on display at the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts until the end of October. Later, it will be shown at international film festivals and cultural events, bringing this new take on a classic painting to an even greater audience. Patrick Chen, Irene Wu, and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan is showing off its latest style with Taipei Fashion Week. As part of the event, a runway show was held Wednesday night, showcasing pieces made from second-hand denim products. The designers of the collection want to promote zero-waste fashion. To highlight the collection's theme of equality, the show culminated with the unofficial marriage of a same-sex couple dressed in the upcycled denim outfits. I think it's very good. 因为我觉得fashion需要跟很多的概念结合,然后特别要去宣扬很多的正确的想法。那我觉得他们能够用这样的一个结合,我觉得是非常棒的创意。Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, we leave you with images of BTS free concert in Busan, supporting South Korea's bid to host the World Expo. I'm Bang Yang. Take care and see you next time.